Hey, good morning. Welcome to Hope. Good to have you with us uh, for worship. I'm Jeff Bills, lead pastor, and uh, I'm excited about this morning's worship service. You know, speaking of worship, we had a great experience on Wednesday as we had our very first worship in the parking lot. And uh, so it was a beautiful night. We had about 100 folks who uh, joined us for that, all socially distanced and wearing masks. The band did a great job. It was a good evening. But best of all, it was just so good to see people again. Our next one is scheduled for July 22nd, so I hope you'll mark it on your calendar and plan on being here for our parking lot worship. As we prepare for worship this morning, I hope that you'll uh, fill out the online registration. Um, say hi to our online hosts in the chat box and uh, feel free to make comments. If you have any questions, that's a great place to do that. And uh, it's going to be a good, good morning of worship as we continue in the series we started last week, looking at the book of James and the wisdom for our lives that we can draw from God's word through the book of James. Now let's join the team for a time of worship. Welcome, Hope Church. Hope your singing voices are all warmed up. Come sing with us. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause our God, I serve, knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. No, my God will never fail. I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. The enemy meant for evil and you turned it for good you turned it for good mm -hmm. you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turned it for good you turned it for good sing it now you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turned it for good you turned it for good Whoa. You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Sing it loud now You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Oh yeah You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good you turn it for good. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to 
you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. That never fails, you won't fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Count on one thing, same God that never fails, you won't fail me now, you won't fail me now, in the waiting, same God who's never late, working all things out, working all things out, oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I Bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, all my days. Oh, yes, I will. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Can't stand against. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Oh.
spend some time in prayer together and lead us in a prayer time and then at the end of that prayer we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. So God, we are, uh, we are grateful for you, Father. For your powerful name that we just sung about. The greatness of who you are and the strength in your name. God, this weekend we experienced a storm uh, of a uh, large storm, lots of rain, uh, the power demonstrated in nature, and I was reminded that you were in a storm, and you said just simply, peace, be still, and the storm stopped. And God, that's what we sang about, the powerful name of Jesus, the one who can stop storms. And so God, as we come to you in prayer this morning, we come knowing that in our own hearts and lives, we are experiencing storms that 
you, God, are able to handle. And so, God, we want you to hear our prayers as we lift them to you. That we ask that you would be with us in the midst of our storms. That, God, we would be aware that you love us, that you care for us, and that you will guide us through every circumstance that we find ourselves in. And so, God, you, we ask that you would allow us to be people who are salt and light in our world. God, that we would bring uh, energy, that we would bring enthusiasm, that we would bring uh, life to the world that we live in. And that, God, that we would provide light and guidance to people living in the world with us. God, we pray this in, uh, for our homes. We pray this for our neighborhoods, for our workplaces, and any other place we would be. God, we want to be salt and light in our world. And so, God, we lift up to you the circumstances that surround us in the worlds that we live. God, that we are in desperate need of your grace and power and forgiveness and guidance in our life. And so God, we ask you and we ask for your kingdom to come. And now God, as a sign of our unity in all of our homes around this place, we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples to, get to pray. And we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I was sure by now God you would have preached down And wiped our tears away Came in and saved the day But once again I say amen And it's still raining And as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you and as your mercy falls, I raise my hands and praise the God who gives and takes away. And I praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands. You are who you are, no matter where I am. Every tear I cry, you hold in your hand. You never left my side. And know my heart is torn I will praise you in this storm I remember when I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry to you You raised me up again But my faith is almost gone How can I carry on? If I can't find you And as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you And as the mercy falls I raise my hand and praise the God who gives Takes away And I praise you in the storm I will lift my hands You are who you are No matter where I am Every tear I cry You hold in your hands You never left my side And though my heart is torn I will praise you in this storm
I lift my eyes into the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes into the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Praise you in the storm, and I will lift my hands. You are who you are, no matter where I am. Every tear I cry, you hold in your hand. You never left my side, and though my heart is cold, I will praise you in the storm. And though my heart is torn, I will praise you in the storm. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I stumbled in the wind, heard my cry to you, and raised me up again. Well, good morning, Hope. It's good to see you all this morning. Welcome to our online campus. We're so excited that you could be with us. My name is uh, Rick. I'm one of the pastors here at Hope Church, and we're in the series that we're calling uh, uh, Wisdom, and we're looking at a timeless insights from James and how to live wisely in today's world. So last week, Pastor Jeff and I talked about that wisdom equals uh, practical discernment, that it's really wisdom is not what you know, but how you live. And I'm excited that I'm here with Pastor Steve this morning. Uh, I always enjoy when Steve preaches, and I'm equally excited that we get to do this together, Steve. It's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. It's uh -huh. good to be here. Yeah. yeah. So let's take a few moments to talk about that. Talk about how we live. You know, culture is how we live without even thinking about it. And if we're honest about our culture, I think we can see that there's two things that really kind of pervade a lot of our lives. And one of those things is convenience, and another thing is comfort. Mm. So convenience, what do we mean by that? Well, you know, it's good, especially in a pandemic, to be able to get the things we need by getting them shipped to us. And, you know, three to five day shipping, that's great, but it's not really that convenient sometimes. Mm -hmm. So maybe two day shipping. Two day <laughs> shipping would be faster, it would be better, it would be more convenient. But you know what? I ran out of it yesterday, so maybe one day shipping. One day shipping would be even better, yes. but Rick, we don't stop there no. because now we can have drone shipping. Thank you, Amazon. I'm, I'm telling you. They find a way to make the world more convenient. <laughs> and it's not just that, but think about the internet. So do y'all remember like modems and you know their first computer, <laughs> right? And you had to wait forever mm -hmm to get a picture or some type of message. Well, now we have like Zoom and it's crazy. Many of you might be using Zoom to connect with your families or your friends when you're socially distant. Uh, we've been doing that in our home and I'm connecting with five different locations separated by thousands of miles, millions of bits of data being transferred every single second from microprocessors to cables to you name it. And I am so frustrated when my face gets frozen on that screen. Which seems to happen to you all the time. It really does, and it's very inconvenient. <laughs> it's very inconvenient. Uh, but also comfort, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable when I have to leave the house and my favorite show's on and I can't watch it. Well, let's fix that. How about on demand? You can watch a show whenever you want. That would be much more comfortable. Or when my barista says, you know, Steve, what's wrong with your coffee? I say, you know what? It's really not at the exact temperature as I need it. So maybe someone can fix that for me because in a consumer culture, the customer is always first. Now, those things are all well and good, but sometimes our culture can come into the way that we relate, think about, and understand God. And why that can be somewhat difficult is that God uses some other things mm -hmm. to change and to... Uh, motivate us. Things like we could wait in life mm. or that we have to be patient for 
sometimes life is honestly painful and it's difficult. And we ask ourselves, well, God, this isn't really the way that I wanted it to go. Can't you fix that for me? Or, or God, this isn't how it was supposed to be. Or God, even this, if you really love me, God, if you really love me, God, would you really allow this to happen in my life? And so I think what we're going to hopefully learn together today is that this is not the culture or attitude that God wants for Christ followers to internalize or manifest in our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, James is not only speaking to first century Christians, he's speaking to 21st century Christians. He's speaking to you and I today about how we can live our lives because again, wisdom is not only what you know, it's how you live. Yeah, and so James was writing this letter to people that didn't have same day shipping and they, they didn't have a barista. Uh, and so, the, 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 but they did have these issues and struggles in life and that he's going to talk about. It's going to be up on the screen uh, early on in his letter. It's actually in the very second sentence. He writes this, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. So he says, troubles are going to come and there's going to be great joy. And we'll get to that. He's not a masochist. Uh, but then he says this, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And so it seems that James gives a formula for how we can live in this life in the first century for sure and in the 21st century as well. And the first thing he mentions is that there's going to be troubles, there's going to be trials, or we could call it challenges or difficulties, but these things are going to come. Uh, now these Christ followers that James was writing to were experiencing persecution from the Roman Empire, but they also were having infighting within the church themselves. And so they had a lot of challenge, a lot of difficulty. Um, and you know, in the 21st century, we really don't have to uh, question whether or not we have troubles ourselves. I mean, we live in this world where it's a global pandemic. Uh, we have a challenging, we have the challenge of systemic racism. We have this economic uncertainty that's here and now with us. Jobs are threatened and uh, it's a tentative future. So we certainly can see that in the 21st century, trials and troubles and challenges and difficulties are sure to come. I mean, if you are on social media, there are lots of 2020 memes, right? They all are, what else can 2020 throw at us right. next, right? That's how we're seeing this current world that we're living in. And so the reality is that tests and challenges will happen in life, whether it's our family, relationships, our work, our health, and the reality is that life is messy. And so James isn't a masochist, like I said, but what James is suggesting is we're going to see that there are things that happen in life and there's a positivity that can come through those things. Now, Steve, you brought this quote from Levi Lesko to my attention. Uh, uh, he says this, life is 10% uh, about what happens to you but, and 90% about how you respond. Yeah, I mean, I think James is really trying to paint for us a picture of what life can look like, that it's not just trials and troubles, but that there is a process, there's a formula going on mm -hmm. in how to live our lives the way God had intended, and that these trials and these troubles lead to the testing of our faith. James is offering us a radical and a different attitude to have, that we would seek our happiness and our wholeness and our joy in Christ above anything that we might be actually going through, that even in the trial, Jesus proves to be faithful. And, and like you say, Rick, it's, it's not just about putting on a happy face and thinking that everything's going to be okay. Um, it's, but it is saying, you know what? Our hurts are not our whole story. And maybe James had his brother's teaching in mind as he's penning this letter. You know, sometimes Jesus' teachings about the blessings of God, they, they come to us and they don't really sound exactly like we might expect or what life is supposed to be. You know, one of his most famous teachings, the Sermon on the Mount, begins with the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. And he talks about what it means to be blessed. And Jesus says, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the poor, blessed are 
the meek. Blessed are those who mourn. And those teachings really say, cause us to question, you know, maybe life is different and more about something deeper. Mm. And, and Jesus encouraged us that, that those who place their trust and their faith in his teachings will be able to survive the storms that life will bring. So often, troubles and trials and challenges, they lead us to question our faith. Will I believe that God is here or not? Like you said, Rick, you know, how will I respond in those circumstances? Mm -hmm. You see, because we can see life through two different lenses. We can see life through the circumstances that we find ourselves, or we can choose to see life through the lens of a God that's bigger than our circumstances, right. bigger than our trial, bigger than our trouble. I think we could think about it this way. Faith is the opportunity to believe when we cannot yet see. Mm. That's the testing of our faith. Faith is an opportunity to believe when we cannot yet see. Because in seasons of sunny days and clear skies, faith doesn't grow. Faith doesn't grow in those environments because faith's not needed. Mm -hmm. We can see. But faith is needed in those times when things are foggy, when things are unclear, when our vision is blurred by what we're experiencing. And we have to choose to trust because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, throughout the New Testament, the writers often use um, athletes and physical training to compare how our spiritual lives actually grow. And in doing this, they reference something that's true of our bodies, and that's our bodies grow when there is pressure applied to them. Muscles need to be pushed past their usual limits in order to grow. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Are you? I, you don't see it, but I'm well aware of well, it. Well, I'm telling you because <laughs> trying to get your muscles to grow isn't always fun. It's called working out. Exactly. And um, for those of you who do work out or those of you who want to work out, when you're working out, you have to push your muscles past their limits. And literally what it's doing is tearing muscle fibers inside your muscle. And afterwards, you feel sore. Mm -hmm. You feel fatigued. You might even feel in pain. But that's not the end result. Right. The end result is actually muscles that are stronger, that are quicker, that are bigger, and able to handle more tasks at hand. This rebuilding process makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, trials are opportunities to test our faith, to grow our faith. And in doing that, endurance grows. Again, Cueing in to athletes, athletes that are agile and strong and quick. They have endurance. And just like that, faith brings endurance to the Christian life. In being able to endure is such a big part of what it means to follow Christ. See, God is using the current situations in our life to produce something bigger than ourselves, a picture beyond ourselves. And it's not always in our nature to endure. Like you said, Rick, you know, working out. Not always a lot of fun. Sometimes we want to skip it. Sometimes we want to forget about it. We want to give in while we're doing it. We want to give up. And trials and troubles and pain is often like that. Mm -hmm. We want to exit them. We want to explain them. We want to escape them. Yeah. We don't want to endure them. Mm -hmm. But this word that uh, we get, the word endure in English from, is actually the Greek word Hypomeno. Hypomone is um, translated different ways in different translations. Some say patience, some say perseverance, but I really think that when we were studying this together, that it's, it's endurance that's yeah. the best because it's not just waiting around in a supermarket. It's an active participation in being able to be steadfast and to remain under a weight or to choose to stay. And this is the type of endurance. This is the type of endurance, this hypomone, mm -hmm. that makes room and time for God to continue this formula and process in our lives. 
Yeah, like I, said, I love that you said the King James Version uses the word patience, and I really struggle with that because I don't like that it's about patience. Endurance, though, I can see that how, how troubles and trials can lead to testing my faith and growing endurance. And when this endurance grows, James then wraps up and says that it leads to perfection or completion. I think it's going to come up here as the next slide. And it's complete, perfect and complete. James tells us this process leads to perfection or completeness. Uh, the literal translation is you may be perfect and entire. And I know that for some of us, we're, you're going to say, I'll never be perfect. Uh, uh, have you seen my life? There's no way I can be perfect. Perfect seems to not be possible. But the word there, again, very important, the word that James uses there uh, is it doesn't mean without error. It doesn't mean that there isn't a mistake. It doesn't mean that it's perfect in that it has no errors in it. It's the word, it means that it's designed as it's intended to. Uh, so I've used this illustration before uh, when we were present in the building years ago, and so some of you may have seen it. But if you have a screwdriver, like I do, this screwdriver is perfect when it's used to screw in a screw, when it's used as it was intended. It was intended to screw in a screw, and when I use it as a screwdriver, it's perfect. Uh, the same thing could be said about a shirt. You go shopping, and you may try on a new shirt, and it fits perfectly, new right? Shirt. Like Steve's shirt, it fits shirt. perfectly. It's a new shirt, and when you bought, now is the shirt without error? No, there's probably a, a thread or so that's missing. It doesn't mean that it's a perfect shirt. It means that it is being used and designed for its purpose. So that's the word that James uses when he says that all of these trials, these testing of our faith, this endurance, and it leads to perfection or com uh, completeness. This is why we can see all the challenges that we face in life as great joy because all of life, the pain, the suffering, the troubles, the good times and the bad times, the happy times and the sad times, even the most pain-filled moments, when we see it with God's eyes, we can see that God is working to complete you. He's working to complete me for God's perfect intended use. Every moment, every difficult moment can be progress made towards God's finished work in us. And so it's during what, we, what seems like a world gone wrong, right? Globally, locally, even personally, whatever your circumstances, we can understand that the pain and suffering, the trials and the challenges are not an obstacle to God for, that God needs to work around. It is an opportunity right. for God to do his work in us. Right, that's right. Because God wants more than our happiness. Mm. God wants more than our happiness. God wants our holiness. Mm -hmm. And he is doing a work in us. The writer of Hebrews talks about it this way. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. And here it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, and it continues, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Let us run with hypomone. Let us run with endurance. It is the same word here. Because becoming like Jesus is not always easy. It's a race of our lives. It's, it's our whole lives that we set before him. Denying ourselves, dying to self, to live for him is a process. And it's a journey that he leads us on. It is a race. And we are to run the race of life for him. And to throw off, as it says earlier, to throw off our expectations or our hurts in our past. To throw off the weights or concerns of our day. To not let the sin that so easily entangles us like shoelaces tied together, right? Mm -hmm. To untangle those things and to run the race that Jesus has called us to. And it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It isn't about a moment or about a day or about a season. It's about our lives running the race that Christ has put before us. And so like a race runner needs to do, I'm not a marathon runner, but those who I've talked to. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. We I, I, I know. But those who I talk to say, you got to breathe. 
You got to breathe in the word of God. It's what's going to give you the energy you need. You need to drink. You can't run the whole race without quenching that thirst. You need to drink of the Holy Spirit who gives you power to overcome. You need to set your pace. You need to set your pace with those that you're running the race with, those that are in fellowship with you in church and encourage one another. And we need to know what the goal is because the goal of the race, the goal of the marathon is not just to get through to the other side of your problem. Mm. The difficult part is that the goal of the race is to see Jesus, to see Jesus. And so it continues in verse two. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects that word we talked about earlier, Mm -hmm. our faith. We keep our eyes on Jesus. He is our example. He is our focus. We are not focused on getting through the problem or getting over the obstacle. We're focused on Jesus. Look at Jesus. And in verse 3, it finishes Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured hypomone. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame, not looking at its shame, not focusing on its shame, looking through what was to come. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. And finally it says, think of all the hostility Jesus, he endured from sinful people. Then you won't be weary and give up. That's what Jesus is saying to us today, friends. Do not give up. Do not be weary. Do not stop running the race. I'm with you. Set your eyes on me. And so maybe, Rick, one of the questions we can all ask ourselves today is, what does it look like to be in the process of being conformed to the image of Christ for the sake of others? Mm -hmm. I know we say that a lot here, but just take some time to think about that. Do we look like Jesus? Yeah, because I think the challenge in the 21st century is what we started with, uh, what Steve shared is about comfort and convenience, that we expect those things and not realizing that it's through the trials and the uh, struggles that we grow best, that God grows us best. And so this idea of how can I remain under, how can I lean into the challenges and how can I, I grow that endurance so that I can come to this completed product that God has, this being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ for the sake of others. Seeing God in the moment not always is not always easy, and it's, 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 um, it's not even pleasant often, but to know that in this moment, God is here with me right now. So I want to I want to lead us in a time of prayer. We'll pray together, and then the band's going to close us in a song. So let's pray to God. Pray together. And so, God, we thank you for uh, God. We know that you have a plan for us. We know that you have a plan for each one of us. That you have a plan for our church as well. And God, help us not to uh, too easily look for convenience and comfort, but God to. Uh, to, to lean into the struggle, to lean into the pain, to lean into the challenges, God, because we want you to work in our lives, and we know that you can work in those moments. God, wise living is challenging, but on the other side of each trial, each difficulty, each challenge, is that we can be promised that you will lead us into perfection, and God's complete work in our life. And so, God, give us wisdom to live life during this time, in every circumstance, in every moment, to see it as great joy because God is growing us. And God, give us strength to lean into these challenges and to grow to be like Jesus. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Just 
to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against, that I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against, oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Hey, before we go, four quick things I want to share with you. First, you know, now that we're not meeting together live, you have to be more intentional about your offering. It's no longer um, coming to the church on a Sunday and putting an envelope in the plate. It requires a little more of your attention. So thank you for those of you who are giving online. Uh, we have a give button on our live platform that you can use, or you can go to mehope.org backslash give and uh, give online. You can mail in a gift, 700 Cooper Road, Voorhees, New Jersey, 08043. However you give, please know that it is your gifts, it is your generosity that is funding everything that we do here at Hope. Secondly, I want to let you know that we are having a new member class. It starts July 22nd at 7 p.m. It will be online. If you would like to register, please send an email to lindsay at meethope.org, lindsay at meethope.org, and sign up. You know, it occurs to us, we have 12 different states that tune in every week. You don't have to be in Voorhees or one of the surrounding towns to uh, come to our new member class. So anybody who's watching these on, uh, online worship services can register to become a member of Hope Church. That's one of the joys, I think, of this new experience that we're having as an online community. So that is July 22nd, 7 p.m., online, new member class. And if you're interested, lindsay at meethope.org. And then on Friday, July 24th, Gwen Hoadley is going to be hosting a women's paint night here in the parking lot at 700 Cooper Road. And uh, so Gwen is an art teacher and she's a great art teacher. I've actually done some painting with Gwen. Um, and so if that's something that you'd be interested in, ladies, all you need to do is uh, register, pre-register. You go to our website, meethope.org backslash paint, and you can register for Gwen's class. And then lastly, we're continuing in our Hope Outside initiative. And so this week, our group project, our, our church-wide project, is to create a thank you box for your front stoop. The idea of this is that you're putting things into a box uh, for those who deliver to your house. I don't know about you guys, but more and more, we're having things delivered to us through Amazon and uh uh, different companies like that, UPS and so forth, are dropping stuff off. And so we're encouraging you to put a little thank you box out for those delivery folks. And you might put a bottle of water or soda in there, uh, hand sanitizers, um, some kind of candy or uh, wrapped crackers or cookies, any little item in there with a note to your delivery folks saying, hey, thanks for serving. If you do that, we'd love to know that. So let us know that you do it. Send us a picture of your thank you box. You can send it to heather at meethope.org and let us know how you are uh, serving others uh, who are delivering to your house in that way. Hey, have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you back here next week. Behind us for Hope 
outside. Hope you guys have a great day.